continuing coverage of Carly Briggs' murder trial. On the witness stand, the prosecution is examining uh, the investigator. I have skimmed through this. Uh, he gave his credentials so far. They talked about the uh, outline showing photographs of the house. They talked about were there more weapons in the house, th this kind of thing. But this right here, I thought was a good place to jump in because now he's going to talk about uh, the interview with the girl that was there. So he had just said uh, that they got a knock on their door. It was the dad, and they're bringing her in to have an interview. And um, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, at that time, did you, <clears throat> excuse me, did you participate in an interview of that child and her father? I did, just ma'am. Um, and based off of uh, what you learned, what did you learn from that interview? Um, you, am I allowed to say her name or just her initials? Um, she was identified as Brooke Wafer. Um, she was, uh, her father and her cousin accompanied her to the sheriff's office that day. Um, we brought them into an interview room. Uh, she was essentially a peer and a, uh, and a schoolmate of Carly Gregg's. Uh, they both attended North, Northwest Rankin and, um, she essentially told us and we were being very careful, um, in our interviewing of her simply until we could gain guidance uh, the, the following date um, about whether or not we needed to obtain the services of the Child Advocacy Center. Uh, the Child Advocacy Center simply stands as a neutral party in order to um, forensically interview children, whether or not they are victims or witnesses that have experienced traumatic events in life. Um, and so, Investigator uh, yes, Cornell, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes, uh, are you familiar with the fact that Rankin County has a protocol in place uh, about the age of certain witnesses? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, ma and is that why your office wanted to make sure that it was okay for the Sheriff's Department to, in fact, interview this child because she was 16 at the time? Correct. Correct. Okay. So anybody anybody 17 and under, we, we usually try and obtain some guidance as to whether or not uh, CAC interview will be, will be necessary. Um, considering Miss Miss Wafer's maturity and her chronological age, um, we went ahead and conducted uh, an, an interview with her at a later date, uh, which was more detailed in nature. Um, but for the purposes of the of the initial interview that night, um, she uh, essentially stated that uh, Miss Greg had contacted her, said that it was an emergency; she needed to come by the house. Um, they. Uh, her father drove her to that particular location like he had done uh, times before and uh, dropped her off. I believe he said it was uh, about 5 o'clock. Um, and so um, we uh, continued interviewing her, trying to ask general, generalized questions. Uh, what did you do when you got there? Um, Miss Greg met her at the front, Miss Carly Greg met her at the front door and um, essentially asked her to do dead bodies make you squeamish? And she said, "No, nah, I don't think so." And Miss Greg proceeds to take her back to the uh, to her own bedroom, uh, where her mother's body lie uh, deceased at that point in time. Um, and so uh, she stated that during this point in time, uh, Miss Greg, Miss Smiley, Miss Ashley Smiley, already had the towel on her face. Uh, her arms had uh, were uh, in a fixed position across her torso and that uh, Miss Gregg had a silver revolver. I believe she identified the handle as being uh, brown instead of black, uh, that black rubberized grip, but uh, but stated that it was a very large revolving, uh, very, very large revolver type firearm. Um, and then Damn. shortly after that she told Miss uh, Wafer that, uh, Miss Gregg told Miss Wafer like I shot my mom three times, and I'm, as soon as my stepdad gets home, I got three shots for him. Uh, they shortly thereafter, she asked if um, she was asked if she wanted to wait in the backyard. She said she did. Went out the back door that uh, that was described to you a second ago, next to the dog kennel, and uh, and waited. Um, once Mr. Smiley arrived home. 
Good Lord. She, she stood there and waited. We saw the video of her and Carly jumping over a fence. What the hell? I can't even imagine. Your friend calls you over and she said kill her mother and says she's going to kill her father. Do you want to wait in the backyard while I do this? Sure. It, is the other girl disturbed as well? Why didn't she run? She said, yeah, I'll wait in the back. No problem. But maybe she was scared because Carly had the gun. That's a possibility. Obviously, it would shake me up. So I come over to somebody's house. <clears throat> if I was a teenager and like, oh, my God, you're thinking in your head, shit. <laughs> but she gets to go to the backyard. Carly's back in the house. Why didn't she run? Run to the neighbors. Call the police. Dab, blame. Now, well, because she's young, she's a dumbass. Yeah, she's a dumbass. Oh my God. She heard three shots. Uh, Miss Wafer stated she heard three shots. Miss Greg ran out the back door, and um, they both ran around that L shape of the house. There's a privacy fence around around this entire backyard. So they uh. They come out this door, run around the back of the carport. There's a small shed right here in the yard. Run out this way, jump the fence, run up the driveway where they, we later learned that they split off. Uh, Miss Wafer, Miss, Miss Wafer went to another uh, friend's house in the neighborhood. Miss Greg circled back around and went to the Magnolia Point subdivision, which is an adjacent neighborhood to Farmington. Um. After your presence in the interview with Miss Wafer uh, and, and her father that night, uh, what was your next involvement in this case, if any? Um, so, I believe my next involvement was on the 22nd. Um, we, uh, during that initial interview with Miss um, Wafer, we learned that um, there were uh, some, I, I guess I should back up. So, the 22nd, um, we wanted to try and get uh, a copy of Mr. Smiley's phone. Investigator Cotton um, had been discussing um, the case with him, trying to get more information with him due to the traumatic nature of uh, what he experienced. Um, a lot of times in my profession, uh, we see what we would like to call traumatic, traumatic mind. Um, people experience trauma and um, essentially resolve it, um, handle it in different ways. The point being, days after that, things begin to come clear because your mind enters a fight, flight, or freeze type of mode. And so as he, begun, as he began to kind of come out of that, Investigator Cotton had talked with him, talked about getting a forensic extraction of his cell phone uh, in order to figure out whether or not there were um, any messages because he had received two messages that day from um, from Miss Smiley's phone that didn't seem like her, and so we wanted to we wanted to uh, obtain copies of those text messages. So on the twenty second, uh, we uh, found out that Mr. Smiley had obtained the camera that was within the garage. Um, we had uh, we had overlooked it the, during the initial um, processing of the scene. He had collected it for us and. Um, uh, I had gone by to our investigator Cotton, collected the the, uh, the SD card from him, and provided it to me. So during the initial look at that particular memory card, found that all the videos for the 19th were missing. The file folder was in place, along with all the other file folders, um, which uh, aroused some alarm. And so uh, had deputies. Lewis and Hunter, they were helping us canvas the area uh, after uh, Mr. Smiley stated that the camera from the kitchen had been missing. So we re-canvassed the neighborhood, canvassed Magnolia Point uh, subdivision, essentially trying to locate this camera that, 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 was, uh, that was gone. And um, during that point in time, I had a memory card reader, uh, you know, a little box you plug in your computer and you can read the little memory sticks or the SD cards. Yeah, and that camera, by the way, was in the refrigerator the whole time, which we found out in day one of the stepfather's testimony. 
And also, I know why they're going over this. Well, they kind of have to because he was accused of altering or clipping and deleting stuff. I guess they were, I mean, look, in any investigation, they have to rule out everything. Was he in compl complacent with her in doing this and setting this up? Probably they, they don't know what they're doing. Well, we just found this, this, this camera. They didn't see it in the garage. They did. They didn't know to search the refrigerator. I guess who would have thought to search refrigerator and it's behind a bunch of waters in the back of the refrigerator. But he was clearly upset. If y'all go back and watch his testimony on day one, the stepfather, he was annoyed with them, obviously because they were accusing him of things. But. I guess he not everybody's savvy in watching crime TV or crime shows in general that uh, the, the family members are the first ones to get looked at. That's just a given, right? I guess he doesn't realize that. He should have said, man, they're just going to think I did this. So, well, suck it to me. Let's get, let's get over it. But he was annoyed by it anyway. Plugged it in, found what I found, and uh, found the videos missing went back to the residence with deputies Lewis and Hunter um, for the purposes of having their body camera to essentially provide some accountability and some transparency, transparency to the situation. Had a, uh, had a conversation with Mr. with Mr. Smiley about the missing videos and learned that um, basically he was used to, uh, to a Microsoft product and was using an Apple product in which to look at the SD card. So when he looked in order to try and uh, preserve the videos on the SD card from the Apple product, he cut and pasted inadvertently instead of copy and paste. And so we were, he allowed me access to his computer. I found the video files that were missing at that point in time, retrieved those, looked into the, um, the recycle bin, the trash folder, what have you on the Apple product, and confirmed that there were no videos in that particular area, uh, which would you know, illustrate to us that he may have been attempting to destroy evidence. Uh, we had a conversation with him about the need, um, if he, obtained or if he found or if he recovered any other evidence in the house not to touch it not to do anything with it to call us we were here that we were here to help him in any way we could and we did not want the inference to be made that he was tampering with with evidence uh, and and essentially um, create a create a problem with the prosecution of Ms. Gregg's case well on his testimony, now, remember, he, he is like this mild-mannered, calm, just, he's kind of an odd man, the stepfather I'm referring to. Um, this whole thing of him not believing Carly is, was Carly at the moment, right? Go back and watch it, right? It was just, it's just really strange. But according to him, He's like, they're, they're accusing me of this and that, and they weren't pleasant with him. But this guy is coming across as, yeah, we were just telling him we're here to help you. <laughs> Which they are, but they were probably like, hey, why'd you do this? I mean, <laughs> if they've got computer text, they can find everything. Nothing's completely deleted off the computer. They should have been able to find everything it's, it, forensically. I'm... Um, Assuming that they can, we always hear about the the data stuff that they can find. But I just wanted to point out that how calm and cool he was, and how he's referring to his conversation with the stepfather, <laughs> not according to the stepfather. And so uh, he was very um, very understanding of that particular point. And um, and uh, after we left that particular time, 
Uh, he was later provided that cell phone back that we obtained the extraction of, as well as that SD card after we um, made a copy of it along with the videos. Um, that's that. That was my involvement on the 22nd. Uh, we would we would later go back and do the the more detailed interview with Miss Wafer uh, at her parents' house in the Castlewood subdivision. And that's what I want to know. Uh, I, <coughs> I want to ask you about the conversation uh, with East Valley about right. the tampering uh, with the physical oh. evidence. Did you ever tell him that you were going to charge him with a crime? No, ma'am. The the inference that I wanted him to understand is that he was a victim of a crime. He, you know, was essentially he had just lost his wife, a, a stepdaughter that he had essentially spent uh, a, a good deal of time with uh, over the past several years, had essentially been fighting for in a in a uh, in an embattled custody uh, chancery court issue, uh, and and he essentially looked at her like a like a daughter. And to have this happen to him, we were very understanding in the situation that he was in. But at the same time, we don't want to create problems where there aren't any. Um, we don't. We would much rather the victims of the complaints in these situations just leave the evidence alone. Call us. Hey, look, I found X, Y, and Z. Can you come? Can you come pick it up? Collect it. Not a problem. We'll we'll we'll, we'll take care of it. That essentially puts the onus the onyx on us. Uh, not Mr. Smiley. It doesn't put it on anybody else. If the, if the evidence is mishandled or or if something happens to it, the that's that that's my fault. That's my problem. It's it, it's not on him. It can't be construed or misconstrued that he is tampering with evidence. That he's doing anything in order to hinder the prosecution of this particular case. Well, and in his testimony, in the stepfather's testimony, he was asked had he seen the footage of inside the house and he said no because guys he had he finds he finds the camera well he knows that the camera's in the garage the police missed it but he goes and looks at it okay yeah he gets some goofy stuff converting it or whatever but then okay so then he tells him Okay, if you find any more evidence, don't touch it. So obviously he finds the, the camera in the refrigerator, right? And he doesn't look at it. Now, would his perspective have been different on the stand? I'm just hypothetical asking questions here, just so like the what if, thinking out, you know, what what if, what if he would have found that first? And then he looked at it and said, oh my God, look how creepy she is. Look what, what she's doing. Going and looking around, getting the gun, coming back. You can hear the shots. I mean, but he hasn't seen it. But yet, guys, keep in mind, he's been st he's been having communications with her. Probably during the trial, he hasn't been able to talk to her. I'm just assuming because they, they told him he can't even be in the courtroom because he's uh, up for, uh, at this point in the trial. He's up for being called back in. Um, so he, he most likely, I'm assuming, he can't even talk to her. But he has a relationship with her. Yes, he's probably, he's forgiven her. But good Lord, guys. What she had done. But I'm, I'm just, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, w would he be different if he sees it? Now, at this point in time in the case, from day one, he says he has not seen it. Just pointing that out. And I think it's because they told him you find any more evidence. So he finds the camera after he finds, after he gets the camera out of the garage. They said, don't touch no more evidence. You find something, you just call us and let us deal with it. Then he finds the camera in the refrigerator. Uh, and that's Gary Burnell, I, I want to just pick on you a little bit. Okay. Uh, you're not perfect, right? No, ma'am. The only infallible person died on a cross for us. Um, and uh, so you would agree with me, too, that absolutely no investigation is perfect, right? I would agree with that, yes, uh, And in fact, I think ladies and gentlemen have heard that, that while there were multiple deputies and investigators over at Mr. Smiley's residence, we, you did not know that there was a camera in the garage. Correct. Completely overlooked it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Those sort of things can happen from time to time. I agree. Yes, ma'am. Uh, does any... Uh, any issues with your investigation, maybe that you missed the camera at first, does anything change uh, with regards to who the shooter was in this case? 
No, ma'am. Does it change the Ouch. crimes that were committed in this case? No, ma'am. Uh, and based on your investigation, who in fact was the person who pulled the trigger uh, and shot Ashley Smiley and killed her, uh, shot her three times? Carly Madison Green. And who was the person that shot, either shot Heath or at Heath three times? Carly Madison Gray. Court's indulgence. Well, it's clearly obvious she is from video evidence. And thank God they had video evidence. Now, maybe they could have pieced it to her because she's an idiot. And would she had time to do anything? Probably not because she missed shooting him when he come home. But the video evidence is clear. It is clear and cut. She did this. She's not upset today, guys. She was upset on day two. Okay. Here comes the defense. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, let's go ahead and take our minute. Uh, they're going to take a break, and then we're going to get right back to it. It's the defense's turn to cross-examine the officer, Burdell, I believe that's his name. But prior to this, and I'll put the link in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. Because, good Lord, it's eight hours of testimony on day two. Uh... There was some objection from the prosecution because the defense is wanting to place a video or not place a video and talked about perjury, but they're saying the defense is saying, no, we're not going for him being perjured because can he comment on a video he wasn't in or can he comment on a video that he has seen? <laughs> it's like, guys, what does this defense have? They're throwing everything they can, I guess, to just get a break, and they're they're not. They're not going to get a break unless they're they're going for a lesser sentence. I, I don't know. I'm just you know I'm I'm speculating. I'm asking questions here as as we go through this. It's like you know, like I've said in other videos, I'm more intrigued about what is the defense doing. What are they going for? Because that's the whole thing. Like, how are they going to? maneuver around this plethora of evidence against Carly. I don't even think they've, obviously we haven't gotten to the psychiatrist yet, but I don't even think they've established anything in her defense so far in day two. Nothing. Zero. Nada. Video evidence. Everything points to Carly did this. Carly knew what she was doing. So that, this is just my perspective of watching this. But anyway, here's the defense cross-examining the detective. And uh, they're going to talk about some videos. Now, here we go. What was your, I guess, your role on March 19th when you showed up at the scene? Your role, you're an investigator, correct? Correct. And I know you went and, and you explained to the jury what an investigator does. Uh, you're sort of, you're, the, you're one of the managers. You're one of the guys in charge of the scene, and you're telling the other individuals what they need to be doing. Would that be a correct assessment? That's a fair assessment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And if I remember um, at the scene, and, and you've shaved, because in the, in the video, <laughs> yes, you're, you're in a beard. I am, yes, sir. And yes, you're, sir. In a, you're also in a white shirt. Correct. Correct. Okay. And when... You arrived at the scene, I think one of the first things that you did was, and you, and you talked about the gloves, you told everybody they need to be gloved up. Yes. Okay, because as you're taking command of the situation mm -hmm. and making sure that the scene isn't contaminated, things of that nature. Right. 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 The next thing I noticed you went in, and that was you said something to the officers about clearing the house. Do you remember that? I don't know, sir. Okay. I, I don't. I don't recall that particular portion. I do remember. I do remember them going through and clearing the house, or I may have asked <laughs> Deputy Lewis if they had cleared the house. Uh, I, I, I remember. I remember there's some something close to that. Yes, sir. Because in the video that we've already seen, okay, is and that was the officer. I think it's Lewis who had showed up first, and when he comes on the scene. Um, uh, or when it when you come on the scene, it shows you and you're taking the pictures, just like what you described. Yes, sir. You start going around the house and right. taking the pictures, and then you get inside, and you made mention to the officer had it been cleared, and then it okay. was like, 
I may not have been clear, but y'all need to clear it. Do okay. You remember that? I, 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 don't, I don't recall that now, sir. Now, and why with today's nectal technology of DNA and, and uh, contaminating a scene crime, why would he have to tell them to glove up? <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to point that out. It's like, really? <laughs> Now, I, I noticed some some of the officers, if y'all were paying attention to the footage, that they didn't have gloves on. And I was like, well, why don't they have gloves on? When I was watching some of it. And look, and I'm not an expert. That blame. I know everybody's watched forensic files. It went, went for, what, 17 years? Forensic files was really amazing and taught us a lot about DNA, crime scenes. Either a criminal will leave evidence or if they didn't leave evidence, they take evidence with them. They usually always get their guy sometimes, you know, because of the forensics. But why would he have to tell them to do that? Just, just saying. It also... There was another individual that showed up, and he was in a blue shirt, okay? And, and I think that's officer or investigator Cotton. Uh, did he have glasses on? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you made mention to Cotton that this was, this was his case, and you were there right. to assist him. Correct. Because you, be, you would not be the main investigator on this case. You're sort of an assistant investigator is what I gather. Correct. So on this particular on this particular night, he was the after hours investigator on call, and so any incidents or what have you that the sheriff's office that, that required an investigator from the sheriff's office to respond to a scene or or handle any of those kinds of things, we usually go on call about. It depends on va people's vacations and time off and stuff like that. But a, relatively about every nine to eleven days, we 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 will rotate on and off that particular call schedule. This happened to be his particular night on call. So the, the the duty as the primary investigator was his. I was simply there to, uh, for lack of a better term, accommodate him, assist him, do whatever I could to, to, to make his job as the primary investigator just a little bit easier. And, and the, the whole thing of you being an investigator and, and going to the schools and processing the scene, mm -hmm. the way you do is to make sure that you're coming up with the correct information and it's stuff's not getting contaminated and things of that nature correct correct yes sir and I and I, and I want to say you you talk one of the things you talked about was I'm going to make sure it was it was the journal I guess the crime scene journal or I, when I it, what, did, what did you call it when the people coming in and out of the house that's that, uh it's a it's a crime scene log crime scene yes log. sir yes, yes sir mm -hmm. And in the video, it shows you, and I think it was uh, Deputy Rayburn, you told him to start marking, you know, who's coming in, who's coming out of the scene, things of that nature. And he had a, like a little memo book. It looked like, like a, some sort of notebook, and he was writing down who was present, what they were doing, things of that nature. And, and it looked like whenever somebody was going in, he was writing it down. Is that is would that have been his job? I remember. I, I remember getting on scene and then uh, going back to my car, and it, I'm I'm recalling this uh, not only from my report but also from uh, from Deputy Lewis's body camera. I get a crime scene log out of my at the back of my expedition, and I give it to him, and that was his duty at that point in time. If he if he had delegated it, I, he did delegate it off to uh, off to Deputy Rayburn. But but you're you're correct in that. I I essentially gave him that responsibility. Right. And what happens is you got you have a whole bunch of stuff that's going on right. Right. Now, and you're telling this person to do this yes sir and and because you i think you were doing because you got gloved up I correct mean, the video correct shows you getting gloved correct. up and then and you did that before you went in the house so you're okay correct. outside when you're taking the pictures correct. and you put the gloves on went inside yes sir um were you the only person that took photos um i believe so yes sir i think in, if i recall correctly investigator cotton brought his camera inside inside the residence never used it if i recall correctly if there there may have been times where um we wanted to capture a particular piece of evidence uh using um 
different angles of lighting, oblique lighting, so to speak. And so I may I may have handed the camera off to him, or or uh, Captain Fred Lovett eventually arrived on scene. I may have given it to him in order for in order for a piece of evidence to be held under direct lighting, oblique lighting, or some other kind of of a, a facet of of lighting in order to capture it properly so to speak but um but 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 yes sir i was my camera was the only one used as far as i'm aware so do you think the defense is going for some flub ups of the crime scene forensic procedures are they going to try to find some faults in that we all know that that's how OJ got off because they hammered home. Well, this this DNA got contaminated. It was sitting out in the heat and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, we were in the infancy of DNA at the time. If you guys are old enough to remember when the trial was going on, I do. <laughs> Actually, I was in California when it happened. I was watching it live on the news. Him being chased in the white Bronco. The famous white Bronco scene, and they finally got him. But during the trial, um, we were all captivated. But they, they, I think that's a lot how they got him off is because of they were discrediting the forensics, and I think this is maybe the tactics that they are trying to use here. But, <laughs> that is a stretch, people. It is a stretch with the because of the video evidence and what have you reviewed okay i know you're not the main uh, investigator on this case yes sir but and and it's cotton who is the the main investigator but when you were assisted in did yes, you review all the evidence also um by review what do you mean by that well okay did you I know you met with some of the the uh, witnesses. You interviewed some of the witnesses. Correct. Yes, sir. The ones that you did not interview, for the most part, did you review their what what they said or did or anything, or did you review or did you interview all of them? No, sir. I I, I did not. Um, uh, I'm trying to recall it correctly now. After our last interview, the the more um, specific detail interview that we did with Miss Wafer, and I, 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 I may have actually notated this at the end of my report. That was essentially my last, uh, my last task or my last involvement, what have you, in this particular investigation. Um, a lot of my duties were relegated to the crime scene itself, and then I, I did pick up some, do some additional assistance to uh, with Investigator Cotton with regard to the interview with Brooke Wafer, um, the camp, the re-canvassing of the neighborhood, and, and things like that. And so once you did, I guess, once you processed the, uh, and this is one thing I noticed in the video, it it has you talking about uh, I guess where y'all gonna be taking Carly and you said you were in contact with I think the, the county court judge and you were waiting to get clarification of where which direction she needed to go. Is that, that, correct? that is correct. Although when Miss Gregg uh, committed the firearm offenses, she committed a certifying offense, their interest of justice hearing would need to be held so that way they could essentially handle that. So the, uh, the youth court, county court judge, uh, they, they maintain dual duty, so to speak. Uh, so they were contacted in, in order to gain some guidance as to what direction we needed to go. Put her in the ADC, the Adult Detention Center, or put her in the JDC, which is the, uh, the Juvenile Detention Center there in Pilagi. And, and that's why it, uh, it was those conversations that I, is that you had her brought back to the scene. Correct. And my understanding from looking at the, the videos, what you were saying is that was happening uh, because you didn't know exactly where she needs to go. And then once you got your marching orders, then you could tell the your transport officer where she needs to be taken. Essentially, yes. The uh, so the the bringing Miss Greg back to the scene was a uh, was twofold. So we were essentially, like you said, waiting waiting on the marching orders um, from uh, from from Judge McDaniel as to whether or not he wanted her in ADC or JDC for that night, um, and then uh, also to uh, to obtain the GSR from from her hands. And in that video, it shows, I guess, them doing the the 
the gunshot residue GSR test. It actually shows it on the on the the video. Did you did you have you viewed that video? Uh, I have viewed. Um, I probably have, sir. I, I, I'll be honest with you. There are no, probably no less than ten body camera videos associated with this case. Yeah. So I, I've, I've, I've watched, I've watched a fair amount. So the, I was there for the collection for the, I guess the end portion of the GSR kit because I actually read Miss Greg her verbal Miranda while she, while she was at the vehicle. That, that's, that's, that's kind of how I know that uh, Investigator Davis collected the GSR. Gotcha. And um, where did you uh, review, I guess it's, is it Shaq, Tony Shaq? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's one of our deputies. Yes, sir. Yes, and he's the person that found, I guess, Carly. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. And then he brought her back to the scene. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And so um, there was a time... I guess where because you're uh, they're all wearing the body cams and you've seen this if you've looked at his body cam you see him turn his body cam off do you remember that um, I know I know that once our deputies uh, for for instance if our deputies are involved in a police activity um, and an investigative um, activity or, or, or what have you, some kind of involved in some kind of law enforcement capacity or something like that, they will have them activated in order to properly, you know, document, record how the scene is, any particular interactions they have with the public, uh, any interactions they have with suspects and things along those lines. Of course, when they activate them. I believe the I believe the lag time is like 45 seconds or a minute where you don't have any audio but at the end of the day like you still have the video which is representative of kind of what's going on for, for, for that one minute now once they get to um, if they're going back to um, uh, for instance if they're concluding that law enforcement activity and going back to uh, shoot the breeze with some guys on their shift or you know going to talk about you know the, the the last traffic stop they made or something like that that's that they're no longer involved in that investigative activity or that law enforcement activities that police activity so they may deactivate them and then and then if they're called back in hey look can you come over here and hold this up or can you can you perform this particular task they may reactivate them come back up and then perform some task or something like that that I need that I need to have done so there 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 may be some on off on off depending on uh, kind of what activities they're related in what they're <clears throat> what they're doing and, and things like that now doesn't the Rankin County Sheriff Department have a policy that says that these body cams as long as you're on a crime scene are not to be turned off correct I don't have the policy in front of me so I, I can I can I can, I can tell you that this I can tell you that policy and procedure we let we use that as a foundation on which to on which to build um, our particular activities and what we do as law enforcement officers it, similarly similarly to like the Bible for instance so like I don't know my Bible word for word letter for letter but I use the moral principles and in the things within it as a foundation on which to build my life is it Am I perfect? No, but I use them as a foundation because essentially, like you won't have every scenario and and every type of of um, circumstance in a policy and procedure manual. If you did, it'd be a mile tall. So when he in day one, when they had the officer who had the body cam, I think his I forgot what his name was. Anyway, um. Maybe it was Lewis Hunter. Or was it Hunter? Anyway, I suspected the question from the defense was about the body cam and if he turned it off. I, I even said it in my comments. Now it's just triggering my mind because I was listening to him cross-examine that officer that had the body cam that we, the, the emphasis, the... The significance of the the uh, the cam when he got on the scene and the father was just in terror. It was it was it was quite uh, 
compelling, by the way. It was disturbing listening to him scream in agony. But my thought was, is where was this questioning going from the defense that day one? That what? Are you trying to say, did he cut his camera off at some point? Where are you going with this? Now, see, I know they... The, the prosecution and the defense, when, when they're in a case, that they're, they're, they, they build day by day questioning. And, and I, I kind of understand that. I'm like, again, I'm not an expert. But I thought, okay, or th- this is what they're going to build on is that they're, they're, they're going to try to jab at the camera footage and jab at. And then when the testimony came up with the, with the stepdad. About the the cops in the in the tampering of evidence and how they treated him, that they're they're just trying to chip away at at, at that. That is now. Let's see how far they're going to be able to chip away. But sad blame. Who cares if he turns his camera off? I think he got what he needed to get on those camera footages. But anyway, it's interesting that day one, how his cross examination of the of the cop with the camera footage, questioning him, do you, do you shut it off or do you you know how asking him the procedures of all of that? Because I remember, I can't remember every word, but I remember him questioning about this. So now here we go. He's questioning him about it. So far, again, how far is he going to go with this? It, and where is it going to lead to get Carly a minimal sentence, I guess, guys? Is that what they're trying to do? But obviously. But the, the, this, is, this is grasping me at straws, for Pete's sake. Well, y'all, I mean, and it looks like y'all have, this is, you, there's a policy and procedure manual that y'all come out for, the years 2023 to 2024. Okay. And my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay. y'all go through training every year to make sure that everything's up to date, you have a clear understanding of what you're supposed to do, and especially what you're supposed to do when you're having interaction with the public, correct? Yes, sir. For in, in to your, and to your, so to your point, we, the Sheriff's Office, uh, we provided like buy space profiling and um, uh, traffic stop related um, uh, training to our uh, civil rights training to our to our deputies this past year. And you would, you're, I, I think what you were just saying a second ago is, I guess real life is a little different than a manual. Is that correct? Is, is that that's sort of what I said? That's a that's a that's a loose way of putting it, but I, I'll, I'll follow you, yes, sir. Okay. Um, but I knew that was coming. And, and tell me if this is your understanding. Okay. Um, if you're having direct interaction with a defendant that's in custody, okay, there's no reason why a body cam should be turned off, correct? I would follow you down. Yes, sir. I I, I would I would agree with that. Now. You have you reviewed Stack's uh, body cam, correct? I don't know if I've reviewed his specifically. The one, the the, the one that I do remember reviewing is Deputy Lewis's. Mm-hmm. So Who was Lewis. A second ago, when you were saying there's a whole bunch of these, and you revert, you reviewed just about all of these. Yes, sir. Now you don't think you did Stack? Well, just about all of them is not all of them. Am I correct? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, like I don't know if I've reviewed his. If we show the video and, and I, I've seen it, I will more than happily tell you that I have seen it. But at the end of the day, I don't know that I have seen it. If I showed you the video, would you be able to tell us if you've seen that or not? Probably so. But the, the like I said, the one that I do remember studying prior prior to my appearance today is Deputy Lewis's because he was the first officer on scene. He obtained a lot of information in pursuance to the initial investigation, which I was involved in. Related to related to why we're here. Yes, ma'am. I I think Deputy Lewis's camera is the most shocking, disturbing, heartbreaking, and what else can you say about it? 
he shows up and the father's screaming in agony. His wife is dead. His daughter did this. He's been shot. He's in shock. But that's all the footage we need to know. And, you know, if I was a juror, I would be like, they're nitpicking. They are grasping for straws. Probably at this point, I would think, who cares if another, if a different officer turned off his camera? They got her, they got her handcuffed. They got her, them reading her the Miranda rights. They got her, they got the on film taking the swabs from her hands to see if she has gun residue. They got everything that was crucial. Now, whether he turned his camera off to go shoot the bull with his buddy, I don't have a problem with that. She was probably in the back of the car with the door shut. Why do he need to leave his camera on? I don't know. That's just my opinion. But, uh, wow. They don't got much to go on, people. Approach, Your Honor. Yes. You know, she was taking notes. <laughs> wow. That's showing she's not insane. She's not crazy. She's taking notes. She's actually paying attention to what's going on. And they they uh, established a how intelligent, and well, I don't know about intelligence, but she's bo good book smart. She's great at math. She made, she made A's. She, she's uh, an excellent student. Never had signs of uh, anger or hurting somebody or hurting animals, this kind of stuff. They've laid that foundation down at day one. I need to, I want, I can't wait to get to the uh, psychiatrist. What are they going to say? And do they have one for each side? I don't know. I'm still diving into this. But this is going to be one of those cases I think that people will be looking back on. And even in other cases, if another teen, God forbid, kills their parent, you know, they'll be referring to this case, too. And those are the grandparents, by the way. My God. Why are they? I guess they're standing by her. I don't know. I don't know the backstory on the grandparents, but them sitting right there and has to look at her and hear this testimony. Guys, I don't know how I would feel about that. I don't know. I think I'd be sitting on the side of the prosecution. i would be honest. I don't know. It's crazy. They need a sidebar. They're probably talking about what videos to play. And why do they need to play the video again? They done played that whole video on day one when Lewis was on the stand. Oh, and the jury will get to see him again if they want. They're going to get all that evidence taken back there with them. They can look at all that mess. May I please call your honor? Yes. Okay. Now, Tyler, the... I know you talked to uh, Heath Smiley. I guess you're you're the one who actually went to his house to retrieve the I guess the videos in this case. Is that correct? No, sir. It was Cotton. Correct. Okay, because I was on. My understanding is, and, and maybe we have there there may be different times when when people went to the house. So you'll have to maybe clarify that a little yeah. bit with me. Yeah. Yes, sir. You were testifying that. You went to the house. Yes, sir. And at some point, um, you brought, it sounded like two other officers with Correct. you. So that they would have the body cam. Correct. And you went in and, and at that time you were saying the reason why you do that mm -hmm. is so that uh, anytime you're interacting with public, you mm -hmm. want to protect yourself, but also the public. Correct. And 
my understanding is that that you are the person who I guess retrieve these this I don't want to say SIM card or whatever whatever I, kind. I, I follow you. I, I believe it's a, like an SD card. SD card. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And my understanding was okay. Is, is what happened? The SD card was retrieved by Cotton, taken to the sheriff's department. Y'all looked at it there and found that it didn't have anything on it, and then you went back. Is that what you did? You, that is exactly correct. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. the second visit. Dealing with this SD card. Correct. Correct. Is when correct. you went to the house. That is correct. That okay. is correct. And so once you and at this point, my understanding is Mr. Smiley has been cooperative with you the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. And and, and when you go back did, were you just looking for the SD card, or were you looking for other things at that at that time? Uh, when I went back and talked to Mr. Smiley, uh, essentially what I was trying to figure out was where the where all the videos from the nineteenth were, like what had happened to them. The folder, the the system had created a folder for videos for the nineteenth, but the folder was empty. There were it, it contained nothing, and so that seemed to lead me to believe that there had been videos that had been moved or that uh, that videos had been deleted or something something along those lines that is the purpose in going back and talking to mr smiley during the course of that interaction with him we figured out like i was explaining earlier that he essentially was not familiar with an apple product and that whenever he clicked on the videos or selected the videos there's a cut, uh, uh, I guess an Apple product does a cut and paste and not a copy and paste like a Microsoft product does. And uh, it seemed like a very, uh, a very innocent mistake or anything along, or something along those lines. And so we were, we were able to recover the videos uh, for the 19th and then, uh, and then subsequently provide those. Um, but at the end of the day, I wanted him to understand that, you know, you don't, you don't have to do anything. Like if you find a piece of evidence or you think something may be pertinent to our investigation, you don't have to do anything with it. Just let us know. We'll come collect it. We'll come. We'll come do whatever we have to with it. So that way, the inference isn't being made. Well, he's well, he's destroying evidence. He's tampering with evidence. He's doing this. He's doing that. So, and, and I just want to make sure for for the record here, at no time was he ever like a suspect in this case at all. Correct. If he had told us that, well, yeah, I deleted those videos, or I don't know what happened to them, or something like that, yes, sir, he would have become a suspect. Right, but at no time he didn't do that, and then Correct. you found out what happened. And Correct. I think, so at no time is he ever a suspect. Uh, was he officially labeled a suspect? No, sir. Was the purpose in 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 having Person that interest. interview with him to figure out whether or not he was one? Yes. Yes, because well, yeah. well, like I said a second ago, if if we had been able to determine that he tampered with evidence or destroyed with, or destroyed evidence, we would have a problem. That 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 would be a significant misstep, and then he would be a suspect in this case. Or that that's common sense that the police have to do that. But again, you know, where's the defense? They're trying to go down this rabbit hole of the cops made mistakes. They pointed the finger at him, which, duh. What is the footage cover from the garage? Him pulling up to the house. Yeah, that's significant, I would think. I'm not a detective or a forensic science, but it kind of makes sense. He's on the video. You can hear him screaming, Carly, Carly, Carly. I mean, none of the evidence, the video evidence, suggests that he's involved no way shape or form but i understand the police's concern they they received this evidence and it's gone the folder's gone what have you done well it, he's saying it was an innocent mistake and it turns out it was he would have been an additional suspect so to speak now and, and i guess I, I i'm trying to get my mind wrapped around it okay he called you to say, hey, I found this, correct? No, sir. He called Investigator Cotton. Well, when I, when I say y'all, the Sheriff Department. Okay, okay. okay. I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're Let's putting down. Let's make it okay. clear. He didn't, he didn't call you. Did he, I don't, did he ever have your number? 
Probably didn't. He I, probably had the time. Don't rec- I don't recall if he did. I, I'm and in all honesty, Mr. Camp, I may have given him a business card or given Miss um, Smiley's family a business card that that had my phone number on it. Uh, if if they needed anything from us or, or anything along those lines, I may have given them a business card that had that number on it. I don't recall if he ever used it. It's been a year since the trial, so, so that makes sense. He can't remember everything. He didn't call you. He called Cotton to say, I have found, the, I have this SD card that has some videos on it that y'all need to have. Is that Correct. basically what, what occurs? Yes, sir. Then Cotton goes and gets it. Yes, sir. Then Cotton brings it back to because he, he didn't look at it I guess at Mr. Smiley's place correct? That's correct. You we 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 needed we needed the card reader for that. Okay, so then he comes back to sheriff department and you open it and there's nothing for the 19th. Correct. Okay, and so then y'all are like uh, we got to check and see why there's nothing for the 19th. Correct. Because there's. There's stuff for other days. Correct. But the day that is important that you've been told there's videos on the 19th, there's no video. That's correct. Okay. And you do realize, I know you're saying that you were polite and you didn't insinuate anything. I think the testimony is he went and got an attorney because he was so scared. Would, or do you still think it was just a real good conversation or it was there there was nothing bad about the your interaction i knew this was going to come up because of the testimony from day one of him being on direct and then the cross that he he was annoyed he was told he can't talk to nobody he felt like he was a suspect which he should have known he was a suspect but not everybody is savvy on trials and, and all of this stuff because, you know, some of us don't have lives <laughs> or we're just interested in this kind of stuff. But, I mean, so he came across as, um, yeah, in in his nonchalant way because he's so calm and just kind of odd kind of guy. Um I mean, yeah, he's been through a traumatic experience, but he still has the same personality. He he's on the stand, but he's saying he had a problem with them. Basically, he feels like they were they. He's a suspect. They weren't treating treating him right. He's annoyed with them. I had a feeling that the defense was going to keep coming back at it because then they brought it up on cross when they were cross examining the stepfather. So you have so far. They're digging at the body cam. This is the defense. And they're digging at, okay, so you were all nice and cheerful to him and told him, thank you for helping us. Just don't touch nothing. And let's go get let's go get a snow cone. I mean, so I guess they're trying to find a they're trying to dig at flaws for for the defense. They made mistakes. They maybe somebody wasn't wearing gloves on the scene. I mean, this is just this is reaching, I think, for the defense. But uh, let's see how it plays out. Let's see how this plays out. I mean, what would it have to do with her case if they were pissy with him? It still doesn't change the fact that she killed her mother, shot her in the face three times. Just saying. 